Hi. Hi, people. Uh, my name is Ruben Lubbes. Uh, I'm one of the people who's working on Freedom Box. And uh, uh, yeah, nobody was uh, coming here uh, to, for this year, so I thought, let me do it. I'm, again, not a coder. I'm not even a slideshow maker, so you can see that maybe later on, <laughs> because I've got really good slides, like this one. <laughs> yeah, that is the main slide to me. So. Um, the idea for me uh, with Freedom Box was uh, uh, I came here to Falls Dam 2011 and there was Eben Moglen with this speech, uh, why political liberty depends on software freedom more uh, than ever. It's in uh, 2011 and the strange thing is I watched it yesterday again to prepare and I was like, oh man, this could have been just today. And uh, uh, the, the things that he talks about are really uh, very interesting. So if you ever have some time left, try to watch that video again. Um, back to the main slide. Um, Freedom Box has, uh, um, uh, came into existence because people have no real option for uh, security and taking things into their own hands, uh, except for people like the projects that are presented here. And I've seen a lot of people saying like, but there is no way to do this. Well, uh, there are a number of ways who, that are halfway finished or just begun. begun. But uh, uh, we've been working on this for a long time and uh, our idea is to have a small box uh, that you can buy cheaply, uh, just like a Raspberry, but then mo uh, most likely even more free. So there is the Olimax from the people downstairs and uh, uh, the Beaglebone from uh, Jason Kurtner and his Beaglebone Foundation. They have really open source hardware, not only the software. And we are um, a Debian pure distribution. The, the idea about that is uh, you want to keep everything Debian. So when a release comes up, uh, everything that uh, can be included has to be part of Debian as well. Well, so uh, this time the, the freeze uh, is just about to start. So uh, as a principal, I can tell you, no, thank you, we cannot use your work. No help needed. There's just one bug that has to be done for the release of the new stretch. And for that, we're done. We've uh, added translations. We have a pretty OK uh, set of, uh, of tools. But from that, there on, after stretch, there will be Buster. And from there on, uh, we can have a lot of fun making new tools and uh, build out the foundation that we have built. So. Uh, on, uh, on that, we do need help. So um, we uh, now have the, um, we will be in Debian stretch. This will be the first time that as a Debian pure distribution, we will be um, included. And uh, the other parts that are needed to, to use it as a, as a tool for yourself are available now. We have the, uh, the things to do with it, and the small machines are really cheap at the moment. So the next steps will be adding, um, uh, adding new tools, uh, most likely from Debian. And uh, we now have a blog. We have uh, um, uh, the voice telephone, video telephone, XMPP. Um, well, most of the things that you would uh, uh, expect from a project like this. And uh, it is all runnable from these small uh, boxes. But there is a lot of tools that are already in Debian that are not used by the project yet. And there is a lot of things that can be uh, included outside of Debian that are not even considered by most of the projects uh, here yet. For instance, I personally would like to see something like KA Lite, which is the offline version of Khan Academy, which normally um, uh, gives you a lot of education, but informs a lot about your learning process to big data, which is none of my interest, and I don't think they should be uh, looking at my uh, learning curve uh, as well. So 
This has not been used by any of the, the host it yourself projects, as far as I know. But I personally think it would be very interesting to add that to the normal curriculum because it's not just um, being able to use the code that's made by everybody, but it's also um, uh, improving yourself and improving uh, your knowledge about the world so you can participate in a broader way. And uh, uh, also what people keep telling me is um, it needs things like theming. By now we're just uh, using a, a Debian website to control this, and a Django website with a Bootstrap and no theming, so you know what it looks like. That's why I put the demo up here in, in no. And uh, um, yeah, so um, there is a lot of things to improve, but we have a foundation. Um, at this point, we could use a lot of uh, uh, help and translation, although we have a lot of uh, things, but a lot of uh, ways to improve how people use it uh, and uh, how they could um, show it to other people and of course we try to be a uh, the software for an appliance for ordinary users it's not at that level yet we sometimes still need to use the the terminal sometimes still need to find arcane solutions to uh, to things that should be known and done already but uh, um, we are getting there and uh, at this moment we uh, are getting three new uh, participants that are working full time on this. There is an Indian um, non-profit that's called uh, ThoughtWorks and they're uh, sponsoring the, the main developer at the moment, Sunil uh, Adapa, and uh, uh, two of his colleagues to get this uh, underway. And so if somebody helps out, there is a lot of people also helping out and this will make your contribution be uh, more in use uh, in an easy way. Back to the main slide. Uh, at this point, I would like to say uh, there is a lot of people uh, saying things like uh, uh, there is no way. Um, uh, what do I have to hide? Well. Um, the point of that is you don't need to have something to hide, you have things to protect. And people telling you you, have things to, uh, you, you don't have things to hide, that doesn't really matter. But um, the, uh, the issue is, who do you want to hide some things from? Uh, I've got a friend who told me this uh, last week and I asked him, what exactly do you not want to hide from uh, Kim Jong-il or um, Trump or whoever, they should just not be in your life anyway. So uh, that's a different way of looking at it. In Holland we had a survey about what do you do in an, in an elevator. It was in the 70s and one of the, the main conclusions was scra scratch my ass. And yeah, that's something that you can do when you're in private in an elevator and nobody's watching at you. So by now, we did the, the whole study again and the whole answer did not ever come up again. Because everybody knows that thing in there is looking if I'm scratching my ass now. So yeah, uh, at that point, you know that you have, you have to change your, your ways. And a lot of people, when they are uh, um, shown it in a way like this, they notice that they have changed what they are doing and why they are doing the things that they do. So um, I think the need for uh, these kind of projects is getting bigger and bigger. So uh, I would like to invite everybody to come to uh, the summer festival uh, SHA. It's a hacker camp just like uh, um, the Congress of CCC but then in summer and as a camping. It's five days and there is a lot of people uh, doing projects there in villages and uh, on the main stage. There is still a possibility to, uh, to uh, reach in uh, to the call of participation. So, um, and that way there is still a lot of uh, uh, things that we could do during this summer to get this project, but also a lot of other projects like the COSI, the UNO host, 
uh, and uh, these kinds of projects, getting them more online. And um, yeah, I would like to invite everybody to come over there and maybe uh, we can uh, add some talks or maybe even a village uh, concentrated on that. And uh, yeah. Uh, that is mainly the idea about uh, what uh, the Freedom Box could do and so I would like to uh, reserve a bit of extra time for questions. So maybe um, if there are a lot of questions, yes? Um, you know, well, first, uh, thanks for your work on the project. Uh, Thank you. for Flint that essentially uses some binary that somehow happens to be on my system. Maybe I installed it with another repo or I built it from source or something like that. Um, it's quite easy to add people. Question, oh, yeah. uh, if we, uh, the question was, uh, if you want to use software that's not packaged yet for Debian, um, how do you do it? Well, uh, the plinth, uh, is, uh, plinth is the tool that we use to have a web interface and uh, uh, it is quite modular, so if you want to, you can easily add uh, modules to it to, um, to use the, the, project, the products that you need, but they will not be included in the next stable release. Of the of the software, but if you want to use that, there is a uh, you can make it as an add-on, and uh, uh, you can also make a derived distribution that a lot of people already are making. So you start off with a Freedom Box, which is pure Debian, and from there on you can add your own parts. And uh, so we will be in stable soon. But the newest part of the development will be going into testing. So at some point, people will be asked, go into testing now for the, the newer features. And they may or may not be included into the next Debian. Like we had Charlie, which is a, um, a small uh, application to keep your bookmarks. And it's a, a really nice application, but in the end, it got dropped from Debian, and we had to drop it from the desk, uh, from Freedom Box as well. Yeah. Okay. That short. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I get you as a advocate for privacy issue. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, I think you are making a test with us as well. Because as far as I remember, you made photos at the beginning of the test. Yes, so that's for me. I would like to have the, the freedom of saying I disagree with that. And I don't, don't want to be on your smartphone. Okay, that's good. It's not going to be anywhere on any accounts. So if, you, if anybody likes, I'll delete the whole picture. That was just something that I saw somebody do. And I thought, oh, that's nice. So if, sorry? Please, please delete. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't mind. Um, so uh, that is making a, uh, making the point in the in the first place. So if you have uh, privacy issues, you should be able to say something. And if you are talking to people instead of to a big company like Google, it's very difficult to do that. And with a person, you can just come up and say, "Hey, you personally, I think you're doing something wrong." So I'm really even proud that you guys are saying this. And yeah. Uh. Uh, OK. Yes. Are you making big boards? Sorry? Are you making big boards for new uh, software? Uh, uh. I don't understand. Debian big boards. Uh, Backports. Back uh, we're look. Uh, do we use uh, backports in Debian? Um, we are. Uh, this is the first time that we are being uh, included in the Debian stable. 
So we are looking into using that. So if there are Debian devs who are help, uh, willing to help us out getting into that, uh, that would be very advantageous to us. But we don't have that set up yet. Also because the, uh, the Backports team until now, I think, told us, uh, please come to us when the time's there. But uh, we are planning to do so. Uh, to keep people uh, on stable, able to move with uh, the, the backports, to have some extra features already. But uh, uh, yeah, that is an issue with Debian and uh, the aging of the software during the, the years till the next uh, Buster release. That's going to be the next uh, tool. Hi. Do you have an idea how many people uh, downloaded or are actually uh, using uh, Freedom Vault? Um, I have no direct contact uh, with the logs. So uh, I personally, oh yeah. How many people have been using, uh, downloaded and are using the Freedom Box at the moment? Um, I personally have no info about how much exactly, but I see a lot of people, a number of people in my community that are, um, Testing it, and I uh, there is some information on the on the wiki, which is uh, on the oh yeah freedombox.org. Um, so uh, there is some usage information, but I think at the moment it's a few hundred people at the most. Uh, anyone? Yeah. And, yes. Uh, email server wasn't fully up and running uh, at the time. Um, is that what's the progress on that? Um, what about the email server was the question. Um, the email server uh, is still not in. We have Roundcube now uh, to read email, but email servers are a very much a moving target. Uh, so uh, what is good to use today is not good to use tomorrow. So it's really difficult to keep that up straight. And anyway, is there a way to secure um, email anyway at all? I think by now we should uh, say that email is just on its last legs and we have to move on to the next system that is just not uh, so well suited for more and more um, reading of you instead of you reading the internet. So there is always metadata leaking, leaking and uh, changing that would change, uh, would need uh, email to change its general nature. So in my opinion, I hope there never will be. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some things just have to die at some point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, other uh, protocols and options that are, uh, op uh, that are possible to take over its role. And uh, um, yeah, uh, some things uh, from long ago are still current. Like, uh, uh, I really like the, the Quassel uh, core use in Freedom Box. That's one of my main uses to use IRC, which is also already from the 60s. And uh, um, that has aged a bit better. But uh, a lot of, of the old protocols uh, are just not capable of improving to current specs. Anyone? Okay, this is going to be a short talk. <laughs> well, thank you, David. Okay.